Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And good morning also to those of you at home who are watching our service, the celebration of the Holy Communion with Holy Baptism, and you're watching it today on social media. Please stand for the reading. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Our first hymn is hymn number 365. <laughs> Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Please stand as we sing the Gloria in Excelsis. 
Gospel of our Saviour Christ, according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning at verse 41. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Laka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge. And the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. <clears throat> Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to, one, to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply, yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Elizabeth and uh, we now turn in our order of service again and we sing once again. <laughs> Thank you. 
for, for reading. I actually changed one of the uh, texts for this morning um, because um, in the run of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the church lectionary actually leapt over most of that chapter. And the last time I was preaching from it, which was a couple of weeks ago, on the way out of church, somebody uh, said to me, they, they, they actually uh, quoted that exact verse, Therefore, if you have an offering, your gift if, uh, at the altar, and therefore remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Now, uh, and it was great <laughs> that somebody was able to give me that verse, verse near verbatim without a book in front of them uh, as they left church. It was about three weeks ago. And I thought, you know what, that would be... Um, Good to talk about uh, as um, as we as, uh, come to the Lord's table uh, this morning. And when I say that, I should actually remind you that next Sunday will be the first Sunday from 2020, third Sunday in the month where we're having a half nine service in church alongside the, the 11 o'clock. So next Sunday for the first time since 2020, uh, we're having a 9.30 Holy Communion service. So uh, for those of you for whom that was your your little port in the, in the month, do, do come along next Sunday morning. Now, let's let's uh, turn to uh, the scripture this morning. And um, uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, Matthew 5, it's, it's a beautiful piece of scripture. But I wanted to begin by asking, and uh, there are a number of children in church today, so I'm going to try and keep my words short. Um, but I'm talking about words, and uh, what was the first word that you said as a child? Uh, do, do you know? Um, uh, have you any ideas uh, what might be the first words? Anyone like to to tell me uh, a word or two? What? Mom. Mom? Nana? Mama. Mama. Did you get that in your house, Elsie? Did you get <laughs> the first words? <laughs> Any others? <laughs> one for the dads, now come on. <laughs> I think one of my children yeah. did say yeah. that first. Uh, oh, was that Andrew, was Andrew it? Okay. <laughs> and any, any others? Um, what you do? I said Dada. Dada, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's, there's one word probably that um, we are... We do learn very quick. Now, there was, actually, before I say this, there was another one in the, in the family who actually uh, started off pretty early with two words, and a very inquisitive two words. Uh, it was, what do? What do? <laughs> as as uh, mom and dad were, were heading uh, to do something, uh, a little voice was, what do, mama? Uh, and it was usually, what do, mama? Because uh, it was never really asked of me, what do? Um, and, but those first early words are, are very special, aren't they? But there's one that we haven't mentioned, which is two letters, and it's no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that children learn that very quickly because um, parents uh, use it. Uh, and, um, and, and, it's, and of course, it's necessary that we use it, isn't it? Uh, I, I have to say, no, no, uh, you know, you're... You're, you're usually trying to stop them get themselves into a little bit of bother, like the, the trike uh, going over the top of the stairs and uh, with the little boy on top of it and landing at the bottom. Uh, and uh, there's nothing you can do. Uh, he's already done it. But no is, is a word uh, that we, we use, uh, and it's, it's a protection. And do you know, this brings me to what Jesus was talking about in that section on the Sermon on the Mount. And, uh, it is, I think, for us, uh, a big no. It's a big no, uh, and, and it's very, very uh, helpful to be reminded because he's telling his disciples no to being uh, so angry that they can't forgive a person. Have you been in that place where you can't forgive somebody? Um, someone has so upset you that you can't or you won't forgive I would say, um, uh, uh, if we are entirely honest with ourselves, uh, there's not one of us here today who hasn't been in that place. And uh, Jesus also tells them no to wanting something so badly 
uh, that they uh, stop being thankful for all the things that they have. Uh, and have you been in that place where you want something so badly and you're so focused on it that you forget all the wonderful things that you actually have in your life, all the, the blessings that you have in your life? He also tells us no to, to leaving uh, behind us friendships uh, so that we can go and be friends with, with other people. And I'm sure everybody here has experienced that. A friendship is so important. And uh, he sent us, that uh, Jesus sent us new friendships. Um, don't disrespect those who are in your lives uh, at this time that you love and you care for. Um, he's also saying no to trying to get people to believe um, uh, believe the words that come from our mouths. Uh, and, and I think basically he's saying don't manipulate people with your speech. Uh, be, be open and honest and say yes and no when you mean yes and no. Uh, don't try and manipulate people. So there's an awful lot in this uh, this little passage that um, that Elizabeth read for us. And I'm looking for that verse. I think I have it here. Um, Therefore, if you have an offering at the, at the altar, and remember that your brother or sister something against you. Leave your gift there and first go and be reconciled to them. And I think we, we, we need to remember that uh, when Jesus was walking this earth, he was teaching. He was a teacher, first and foremost. He did miracles. He did many, many things, but he was teaching about his kingdom. And so if I was to paraphrase uh, all of what Elizabeth read, it, it might be something like this. Would you want to learn from someone who calls you names, insults you, is so angry that they can't forgive you, stops being friends with you, uh, to be friends with other people, and then tries really hard to make you think that what they have said is really important. Would you like a teacher like that? Would you like a teacher like that? Would you even bother to listen to a person like that? I think the answer to that would be absolutely not. And this is why Jesus is telling his disciples, do not do these things, uh, because he wants people to be able to hear what the disciples have to say. He wants the disciples to be vessels, uh, that to be people that respect that, 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 uh, and love people as he respects and loves people. Jesus wants his teaching to be heard, not just by the words of our lips, but in the actions and the deeds of our lives. Jesus wants the invitation to live God's better way, to be heard because it's believable, because it's been lived out in people's lives. And guess what? Uh, uh, and this is the, the wonderful truth of it. The disciples listened, didn't they? Because 2,000 years ago, um, I'm repeating Jesus' message in this church. People through the ages have listened and they followed Jesus' nose and uh, they have brought the message to God of God's love uh, through their word and most importantly, their action. And in the same way, uh, Jesus instructs those who work as his disciples then, that's for us uh, now, today. And isn't, isn't that amazing? Um, um, and how do we follow those, those instructions of Jesus? How do we learn uh, from the no? Well, I think key to this is, is forgiveness because um, if we remember that each one of us is a forgiven sinner before God, then uh, that, that context means uh, that uh, we should be forgiving ourselves. Now, I haven't got it here in my hand. Can you pass me an offering envelope there? There, uh, there we are, thank you. Uh, there's, there's one of our offering envelopes. And um, many of you will have come to church with one of those uh, today. Some of you, uh, it's through standing order, but think, think about that. Uh, our family offering envelope, every week we bring an offering as a gift to God. And it's a very important part of, of our worship today. Uh, most of you have probably brought one of those with you today. And there are many, there are many um, places in the Bible that uh, that teach us the importance of presenting an offering to God. And uh, 
we, we are focusing on one of them today. But the truth is, God is uh, much more interested on what's on here than rather than what's in here. Uh, he's interested in what's on the heart uh, rather than what's in my hand. Uh, he says, if you are presenting an offering to God and you remember that you did something that hurt another person, leave your gift at the altar and go and ask forgiveness from that person. Then come back and offer your, uh, your gift to God. Before we give our offering today, uh, and um, I'll just put that back on the choir plate. There you go. Um, before we give our offering today, perhaps we should uh, think and reflect uh, on our, life, our own lives because this is how we respond to the no that Jesus said. No to the things that uh, he suggests we shouldn't do. Have we been angry with somebody this week? And uh, have I had arguments lately with people? Have I called someone a name that's been hurtful? Have I said something about someone that wasn't true? And there's just a few examples of how uh, we are not listening to Jesus' no in our lives. If you've done that, how do you feel about it? Um, and uh, what happens to your heart? Well, I know what happens to my heart. Uh, I feel incredibly bad because I know it's wrong. Uh, and uh, right from little children, I think we learn very quickly that it is wrong. And uh, if you've hurt someone, uh, we have, and this is how God helps us uh, to be in a place of right relationship with other people. If you've hurt someone, we should ask God to forgive us. And, uh, and we should go to that person and say, say sorry and uh, the hurt that we have created uh, for them. And, uh, and you know what? When we do that, God will be pleased with what is on our heart. That is the kind of offering uh, that God wants from us. And uh, so, uh, as I said, how do we in, uh, follow these instructions? How do we follow the known? I think key to that is remembering uh, that we are forgiven. And in remembering that we are forgiven, then we can forgive give others out of God's love for us. And, uh, and we can do that. And you know, that makes a whole change in our lives, doesn't it? It means that uh, in a relationship uh, that maybe we have uh, and are in need of forgiveness, uh, and we receive that forgiveness, that means our words then can, can change in, in other directions. We can encourage other people. Uh, we can forgive other people. We can share God's love one with another and with people around us. Uh, we can show uh, others that God's way looks what it absolutely looks like. Uh, and, uh, and just like the disciples uh, did, we can uh, uh, share God's word in this world through not only through the words of our lips but through our actions and you know I think uh, and I'm very thankful that somebody did say to me on the way out of church um, a couple of weeks back there's a verse that just says what you were talking about uh, and I'm glad of the opportunity today to come back and say uh, these words because that I believe is the good news for us as God's family in this place this morning Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, that you're a forgiving and a loving God. We thank you uh, that you speak to us through that and uh, you encourage us uh, through your Son to forgive, to be forgiven and to forgive others. Help us to hear his no in our lives so that we don't uh, go down the wrong path and the wrong tracks, uh, but in fact, uh, we stick uh, to, to your way. And when we do, we thank you, Father, for that gift of forgiveness that draws us back into, into your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, we're, we're now at the wonderful point of the service where we're going to welcome Drew into the church. So, Brahman, if you could pour in here. Uh, our offering hymn is hymn number 596. 
during which we receive our church offering and also any anything loose on the, the plate beyond the church envelopes will go to the appeal for the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. And uh, a very appropriate hymn that picks up on the very baptism we've just uh, celebrated in, but, but also the words of uh, the, the address uh, that we would seek out God's kingdom in our lives and bring his love, peace uh, and protection one to another and to the world beyond. Let's sing together. Gave thanks and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us to know our need of grace, one in Christ our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise, and we lift our voice to join the song of heaven forever praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest thanks be to you our god for your gift beyond words amen 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 and as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our father our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in baptism you make us one family in Christ, your Son, one in the sharing of his body and his blood, one in the communion of his spirit. Help us to grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual fruit of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And our final hymn today is, um, if I remember right, 158, is it? And thanks and praise if you're in the choir there. Uh, and the tune is Inish Free. Yeah, the tune is Inish Free. 158 and thanks and praise. Let's sing together.
the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.